Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me again today for some more crafting. Today I thought for a change, instead of working with paper and glue, we'd work with wool or fibre. Um, and in this year of oceans and beaches, I thought a good thing to make with it is your own wee octopus. So, what do we need to make an octopus of our own? Let us see. I'll bring all this a bit closer. Just like this. We are going to need, to begin with, some wool. We're going to need some eyes. Now, you don't need to buy googly eyes. But if you have them, use them, you will need glue to apply them. Quite strong glue, otherwise they'll just fall off. We're going to need a pair of scissors. We're going to need a tall book <coughs> or a clipboard and we're going to need some kitchen paper. So how do we do this? Well, let me show you. I'll put things to a side for a bit. The first thing we need with our ball of wool and our clipboard or our book is we're going to wrap our wool around it quite a few wraps. Now, here's a tip. If you use your ball of wool, you stick your finger in there and get hold of the middle, you'll pull the end out and it will just run out smoothly. If you use the other end, the ball of wool will keep on twisting and turning. So use the wool from the center. It's easy. So this is me just putting a last few wraps on here. You have to remember where you started. If you started with your beginning of your wool at one end, be sure to stop at that same end. So when you've wound quite a thick bunch of wool around your book or your clipboard, you cut it off. Try not to stretch the wool too much because um, it springs back and then it's never long enough. So once I've got all of this wound up, now I need a piece of wool because I have to tie all this together. So I chop a piece of wool, we go through our bunch and at the opposite side from your loose end, just at the top, we can make a knot to keep it together. So just, just loosely for the now. Then we slide our wool off our clipboard or our book. Now it's a big old loose loop like this. So now we can tighten our knot quite a bit. See, I've done it quite tight. And knot it a second time, so it will be quite tight. Now, you can chop this off or you can keep this. It's up to your own self because you can turn this into a hanging loop for your octopus. I did not make one on this octopus, so I will have to add a bit to hang it up, if that's what I want to do with it. So, once we've got a few good strong knots, then we carefully divide it, like this, and we go down to the bottom, and now we put our scissors in there, and we cut. The whole business loose. Make sure you catch all the loops because if you don't, in a minute there will be heartache. Just make sure you can see where the loops are. So now, see I didn't cut that loop at the bottom there. It's easily fixed. We stick our scissors in, chop, and there it is. This can be like a wig. <laughs> So, what do we do next? We put our 
pile of wool down. Now, if you want to use these for a hanging loop, have them on the underneath. If you want to hide them, have them on top. And then what we do is now we very carefully, and don't tug because if you pull, you'll pull the, the strand of wool right out and then that will end in tears. So we comb our strands of wool out like this and we spread them evenly all around about because we want a complete circle. It's got to be a complete circle. And next what we do is we take our kitchen paper and we scrumple it up and we scrumple it up and we, we really just scrumple it up until we have a shape more or less the size of our octopus. Now, depending on how much wool you've got, you will need a bigger or a smaller ball. But I think I will go more or less just a little bit bigger than a golf ball. And what we do then is we take a flat piece and we put this ball in the middle and we wrap it all over quite securely, quite tightly, just to keep the whole thing together, just like that. Now we turn it into a ball, and that ball will go on here. Now, before you get this far, it's probably a good plan to take your wool and cut off some more bits. And I would say quite a long bit for this one because it might be tricky. And then you will need to cut a few more, about this long. How many will you need? Eight. Why? Because an octopus has eight legs. And you're going to need a bit of this to tie to the end of each leg, just over here. Right? So, I've got my bit of wool. I've got my ball of... Um, kitchen paper, I turn the whole thing over and now I make sure the wool hangs evenly all around my ball. It's a bit difficult because there's white in my wool and it looks like the tissue paper is sticking out, but it really isn't, I can promise you. So, you put it round and round, just like that. You take your long piece of wool and you make sure you have this whole business snug, put it around and give it a wrap and give it another wrap and maybe a third one so that the whole thing is tight and put a knot in it. So see what I've done? I've wrapped it all the way around and if you give it a few wraps, it, the knot kind of stays where you want it to be. So I've tied it, and I've tied it, and I've made sure it is tight. Now, you can chop this short, or you can work it into your, your plan. Now, for your next trick, you have to find the center again. So, if you flip the thing over, just find where the, the wool divides evenly. And now we turn it over and put it on our work surface. And we spread, once more, we spread the, the wool out evenly all the way around. I'm making a lot of noise. I'm quite sure my, my camera will pick this up. So, when you have it like that, you have to look and divide it into half evenly so that you have two halves that have the same amount of wool. And each half you now have to divide. This might take a wee while, depending on how intent you are on having things very precise. But uh, I'm not really bothered, I'm just going with the flow. Make sure that each bit that you divide off can in its turn be turned into three different strands. And 
Maybe this one up, this one's a bit thick. Give it a little bit more. Okay. So now each strand gets divided into three. Now, you with long hair, you will know what's coming next. So that one's divided into three. This one is divided into three. Just more or less. It's not, don't get excited about it. Now we have to plait each leg of our little octopus. That's a plait. And that's weaving three strands together. And everybody goes, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. Yes, you can. So you have your three strands, one in the middle, one on the left, one on the right, opposite way for you looking at me. So what do you do? You take one of the outside ones and you put it in between the ones that are there. So now you've got a crossover. What do you do next? Now you go to the opposite side and you put it in between the two. And you take the outside one in between the two. It's one for me, one for you, one for me, one for you. And so you go until you have a complete plait for your little octopus. And this is where you need to have your other strand of wool handy. So I will just, what I've done is I have completed my little octopus except for one leg. So while you're watching, I will quickly plait this last leg. And I'll try and do it so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, if you want a good firm plait, you really have to keep your tension. And that comes with practice. I can't teach you that quickly. You will have, by the time you've done all eight legs, you will have it just down pat. So from the outside, the head is in the way a bit, over the top, and I pinch with my finger and thumb. Where they cross, I pinch them. And that way, it makes nothing shifts, everything stays where it should be. See how I use my middle finger to catch the strand in the middle? From the outside to the middle, opposite side to the middle, other side, first side to the middle, second side to the middle, third side, well, it's the first side always. First side, second side, and the middle. So we go over the middle, over the middle, over the middle. And when you get near the end, you will see the bits are too short to go over each other anymore. Then you pinch them together, you take your short bit of wool, and you wrap it around once, and then you tie your knot, just like that. And now our little octopus has eight plaited legs. If you really can't do the plait, all you need to do is take your bunch and tie small lengths of wool all along the length of it. Now, if you're very fussy, you can use your scissors and cut the bottoms level so that they're all very neat. I like the fluffiness of my, all my legs. And now, I glue my eyes on. Now there is an alternative to gluing eyes on. You can use a button and you can sew a button on one for each eye. And that's good fun too. Just take care. Don't poke holes in yourself with the needle. So have fun making octopuses. You can maybe make a whole aquarium of little octopuses. You can make a toy for your cat to play with or your dog although it won't last very long with dogs but I sure hope you have fun making a little woolen octopus for a change. Thanks for watching and don't forget to send in photographs of what you've made 
or a little video of you playing with what you've made or busy making it. I would really love to see your work. Thank you once more for watching with me and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.